Alrighty. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, well, I um, just browsing, just watching stuff on YouTube, and this here came up on one of my YouTube recommendations. Um, I did a I did another version of this some time ago, but it was based on Capcom games. Um, this is just gonna be uh, basically taking a trip down memory lane, and um, this here, and this is pretty much uh, unplanned. I mean, once I saw this, once I saw this video, um, I just did my. Uh, oh great! Hang on, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to tighten up my uh, microphone here. The the legs on and I start to come loose. Okay, there we go. Still kind of setting up. Like I said, this is uh This is hastily put together, so there still might be some loose ends that I need, that I need to tie up, assuming I remember to do so. Like I said, um, I saw this video, uh, Best Atari Arcade Games, um, and having having grown up with, uh, or having grown up playing video games ever since probably the, probably the mid to late 70s, having, you know, having played, um, I think it was a, it was an arcade game called Rip Off. It was at a, it was at a movie theater. It was at a movie theater I went to when I was a little kid. Um, and whatever year that came out, I think it might have been the late 70s, but, yeah. But anyway, so I'm going to take me a trip down memory lane, memory lane here. Same thing I did on my um, Capcom video. And um, I still have to kind of sound check this. Too loud. Gauntlet 2, that's the music. And I'm guessing that's gotta be on here too. Oh yeah. Turn on just a tiny bit. Bomb! Boop! Oh yeah, this here. Now, technically. Now, technically. This wasn't the one. This wasn't the one that started at all. Um, I think there was a game made before this called Computer Space. Although, I think they typically go in chronological order when they do these. And um, so, I would. So I don't think it's gonna be on here. But we'll we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But the but again, this wasn't the first. This wasn't the first arcade game that came out. But um, I think it was the one. It was the first one that got popular. But um, uh, the founder of Atari, Nolan Bushnell, he actually had like a kind of a long story, a long story on this. Like he, he put it up at Andy Camp's pub, and it got and everybody and their dog played that kind of thing. But it he goes in he goes more in depth on it. So, um, as far as personally, I have a, I have a game called um, what is it? Atari Vault, that's got all these old school games old school games on it but yeah and but yeah I whenever I play that of course I play pong I mean I mean how couldn't you it's like the oh, or for all intents and purposes the granddaddy of them all Boop. break out played this um I was probably around oh god I was probably around 10 years old. No. Look at that. Came out in 1976. Yeah, I think I was, um, I think I was probably, I was probably around 10. 10 years old when I first saw this game in the apartment complex I was living in at the time. Um, but yeah, and they, um, they had a, they had a, it had a swimming pool. It had a rec area. It had a bar. Um, they had like two or three pinball games in there, and it also had Breakout. So, but cops and robbers, never seen this one.
fucked up. Oh god, this is pro this I'll bet you this is probably the game that launched a thousand other games that are just like this. Um Spy Hunter first comes to mind. Um There was a car based one for um there was like an Atari twenty six hundred version that had this kind of thing on it. I don't remember the name of it. Like one of them was like Number Cruncher and you played a there was a another variation where you played an aircraft and you had to shoot down other planes, that kind of thing. But Night Driver. Never played this. Seen it. Never played it. I did, however, play the Atari 2600 version a lot, though. Um. Sprint. And kind of a fun fact about, uh, about key games on the lower left corner. This was actually a, one of uh, Nolan Bushnell's satellite companies. It's an old, uh, it was an old uh, industry, or video game industry strategy that uh, he was doing. He would, um, he would uh, quote unquote, or he would quote unquote, create his own competition. And uh, key games was one of them. Um, I think what he would do is, uh, he would, uh, he would secretly launch another company, and then that company would start acquiring, start acquiring talent, start making money, and then, um, I think they would, for lack of a better phrase, fake their death, like, the, like, all of a sudden the company went bankrupt and they're shutting down, and then, um, um, Atari would go in and buy them out, so they would, they would acquire they would acquire talent and all that other stuff that way by creating their own companies. Um, and I think I've, I think I've only played this one in real life one time. I, th I think some odd years ago, either on my PS1 or my PS2, I think they had a something, something along the lines of Atari Classics or Atari. Atari Flashback Classics or something like that that I think had, had this on here. Didn't play it much, though, because I suck at driving games. Oops, I've done that before. Tank. Oh, this is a... In the Atari 2600, this is actually called uh, Surround. And then when the Intellivision came out in the late 70s and early 80s, um, their version was called Snafu. And then the arcade game Tron had their own little version of this. Uh, light cycles. Bull. Never seen this one. Ah. Uh, there's a mid to late 80s. I believe it was a. I believe it was a Williams game. It was a Williams game called Bubbles. It was an arcade game. Yeah, arcade game called Bubbles. I think um, I think that game there would borrow heavily. They would borrow heavily the uh, physics from this game. I mean, on on Bubbles, your the setting was inside of a kitchen sink, and you're a bubble. You had to like, you were, you had to like, you had to pick up grime, ants, crumbs. You had to pick them up, and then you had to avoid like the sponges. The brushes, the razor blades, and then the cleaning lady. Um, you had to avoid all of them. And then but uh the more the more gunk you ate, the bigger and bigger you got. So which the game gradually became harder and harder because of your big size and stuff. But I'm seeing that here. Dragster. Or er, in the Atari twenty six hundred it would be called Dragster. But otherwise, as far as this one in particular, never seen it. <laughs> and, um, 
I guess as the name implies, it just kind of went over my head. I was kind of expecting to see uh, Atari 2600 games in here, but... <laughs> Read the fine print, Joe. Arcade games. So, but that's fine. That's fine. Superbug. Oh, God. This one here has launched a bunch of these out. A bunch of these racing games. And I'm guessing this is the one that started it all right here. <clears throat> um, Rally X was one. And there's a there was a bunch of these kind of racing game these kind of racing games by uh by like obscure obscure companies. I think they were all Japanese, but I've seen a few of them that kind of borrowed from this model. Excuse me. Ugh. Canyon Bomber. Um, never seen this. As far as this, the arcade game, uh, never seen this one before. But, but uh, I've saw numerous versions of this on uh, the Atari Twenty Six on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Um, I think there actually was a can Canyon Bomber. Um, and there was like a air sea battle, I think it is. Um, there was like different variations of this. But yeah, there was like a whole bunch of other games that that um, that would do variations of this. Yeah. It's not like a broken record right now. Sprint. There was eight of them. Yeah, never seen this one. But, um, and, um, as one would probably expect, um, later on, there would be, a there would be an 80s version of this called, uh, there's Super Sprint and Championship Sprint, which is, like, full color, you know, better sounds and animation and all that, so. That should come as no surprise. Air Sea Battle, or Destroyer, but, yeah. But, uh, this particular version, I, yeah, I've never seen this one. But, yeah, like I said, um, Air Sea Battle first comes to mind uh, for the Atari 2600. Had a whole bunch of different variations of this. There's other games that do this as well. The one thing that uh, it looks like what this game does that no other game has is, uh, I don't know the control scheme of it, but, uh, if you can see the, uh, the dotted lines, you can, you can, uh, you can move that up and down. And that's where your uh, depth charges are going to explode. So this is... I think this game could also be a precursor to Missile Command. Which I'm pretty sure they're going to be showing later on in this video. And yet another sprint. Man, this is all this is almost like the damn like the damn Street Fighter games in the nineties. There's like an, just like a whole multitude of different Street Fighter games. Fire truck. Um, I've seen this one. It's got a unique control scheme. Um, I think the way they did it is a, is this is this big huge sucker. I think there was a. It's just like the just the way the fire truck looks. You have two different uh, steering wheel booths, for lack of a better word. You had one guy would sit at the front, right in front of the screen, drive actually driving the front part of the truck. And then you had a steering, you had another steering wheel behind you, another booth basically, where a, where another player would stand behind you and operate the rear part of the 
we were part of the truck. But you, you can get, I can get pretty seasick watching this. Sky Raider, um, uh, and I'm sure this, I can tell already, this is definitely another precursor to a game called Zaxxon. Um, looks like it operates just like this, except from an isometric perspective, from a, from a diagonal perspective. Like, holy shit, then there are, we're not even maybe five minutes into this video and they're already coming up with a bunch of arcade games I've never seen before. <laughs> oh, Atari 2600 would come out with their version of this. Not, it's not an exact replica, but um, it's a game called Kaboom. Um, you have like a robber on top, and he starts dropping bombs, and you have to use, you have to move these buckets around to pick them all up before they hit, before the, before they hit the ground. But. Skydiver, yep. The Atari 2600 came out with their own version of this. But uh, as far as uh, in real life goes, I don't think it was um, this game in particular. I don't think I've ever seen this one. I'm trying to rack my brain here. I've seen something like this. But like I said, it wasn't this particular game. Um, but it was it was something like this. I don't remember what it was though. Play the Atari 2600 version of this though, though of course. Ah yes, played this one. Fun game right here, um, and I think this is, I might be wrong, but I think this is the first game that had a trackball controller. Um, up to four players can play, and um, and this is, uh, how do I explain this? It's basically, it's a, it's a tabletop cabinet. In other words, it's not, it's not your traditional one, like the stand-up one. It's, it's ba literally a table table that had a uh, four big humongous trackballs and I think um each one had a start button a start button and uh, I think it was a select play button as well um each side had like had five plays uh both offensive and defensive but yeah like like I said I play this one a lot Atari football yep And I can't remember. Yeah, you can pass. Nice. Super breakout. Play the living hell out of the Atari 2600 version, though. One cool thing about the Atari 2600 version, every time you hit the reset button on, on the console, it will give you a different sound effect. So you can keep hitting the reset button until you got the kind of sound effect that you wanted. It'd be diddly, doodly, bedly, tush, bedly, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You can just keep hitting the reset until you got the kind of sound effects that you wanted, then went ahead and played. I don't think the, um, I don't think I've seen this, I don't think I've ever seen this one in real life. I've only seen the regular breakout. But I'm guessing, uh, this game doesn't have that option, though. But like I said, I've never seen this one before.
Never seen this one before. No, Atari, no. Naturally, the uh, Atari 2600 had this. Never seen this one. Played it on the Atari 2600, though. And, and judging by the way these players are moving, uh, I think this is another game that used a trackball. And it should, it should also come as no surprise to anybody in the know that later on in the 90s, I think, and this would be this game here would be the precursor to NBA Jam. Boom, Chakalaka. Lunar Lander. Um, I've got this on the, uh, oh, what's it called? Atari Vault. And yeah, I play this one fairly often. And, um, and one unique thing about when I play, oftentimes, I mean, I'm not, I'm not even focusing 100% on the main screen. I'm looking in the upper right corner. Looking at the speed, this is, I mean, I'm off, I'm probably spending just as much as, if not more time, looking at this than I am looking at the actual lander itself. So, kind of a unique quirk of this game. But, um, as far as uh, in the actual arcade, I've never seen it. Um, knew about it. I think there was actually a, there was actually a commercial for, like an early 80s commercial for an arcade called, uh, or an arcade chain called Aladdin's Castle. I think had this in there and had like a couple of people trying to play it. I think um, one of the controls again. I don't remember. I can't remember what, everything that was on it, but one of the controls was a. I think it was a throttle, on the right side. It was just a big old handle. You, you push forward to speed up or you pull back to slow down. I think that's what it was, but the, they try to make it sound like you're. They try to make it look like you're actually piloting a lunar lander and not just some little, little eight-way joystick and like one or two buttons or something. Oh, missed it. Too late, buddy. Go to the next one. Yeah, settle for the 2X. Oh! Oh, damn. Asteroids. All-time classic right here. Although, I don't... I wonder if this is a remaster version. I don't... Because if you look at the... Let me out. Nope. Because uh, if you, I don't think the explosions, I don't recall the explosions being that brightly colored, and the shots as well. I don't recall the shots being brightly colored either. So, I've got a small feel on this one. I'm, I'm being kind of ripped off here. Because like I said, you didn't, whenever you hit an asteroid, all it did was split. You didn't see any big bright explosions or anything like that. But yeah, this sucker's an all-time classic, and, and yeah, I played this a lot, but just like every other game I've played throughout my life, I suck at it. Monte Carlo, heard the name, never seen this. Soccer, never seen this one. In fact, uh, I don't think they ever had. I don't think they ever had a, a twenty six hundred version of this. At least not that I know of. Missile Command, all time classic, right here. I played both the arcade and the twenty six hundred version, and just like and like I said about the last game, I suck at it. Unless it was the, um, the children's version on the Atari 2600, I can do all right on it. But every other version, don't get very far. 
Battle Zone. Another all time classic. No, we really, really are getting into my childhood right here. But I played this version, and I played the 2600 version. The 2600 version, I last, I last a lot longer on there than I do on, on this one here. Um, I probably due to the way the AI, the way I, the way the AI is designed, on the 2600 version, you basically, I basically play that game like Muhammad Ali, just constantly moving backwards. You know, like the rope oak strategy that he often does. I do the same thing on a, on the 2600 version of Battlezone. I'm constantly moving backwards in various directions because I'm trying to get the trying to get the tanks in front of me. It's, I found them to be easier to manipulate if I'm moving backwards and try to do it like that rather than if they uh, if they appear right at the in front of me right at the outset. I have a hard time getting to them. Hard to explain. But if they're already up here in front, they're harder for me to target. It's easier when they're back here. When they're back here, just start moving backwards. They're more easier for me to manipulate them around to where I need them to be. But like I said, it's really hard to explain. You would think um, you would think that the same strategy would work here in the arcade version that as it would in the 2600, but no, it doesn't. Yeah, that's how they often appear in the arcade version. They just pop out right in front of you. Smack. Centipede. Here's another classic. And I'm gonna say the same thing that I haven't gonna say the same thing about this game that I probably will on just about every other 1980s game that came out. Played the hell out of it, but I suck at it, so. Definitely a quarter eater. And, um, and I think we're getting to a point here where, um, the arcade, um, the arcade versions, or the arcades, the graphics and sounds and stuff, we're getting, we're improving to a point where the Atari 2600 stuff in the 1970s arcade stuff was being left behind, was starting to become obsolete in favor of this stuff. So I think that's also going to be a recurring theme in these 80, these uh, 80s games here. The uh, 2600 versions are going to suck compared to these ones. And this game here was one of those. Couldn't stand the 2600 version. Not after playing this. Ooh. Asteroids Deluxe was not a fan of this game. I mean, regular Asteroids was already complicated enough for me. And then, this... This one here, in my mind, was basically unplayable. But, um, in this version here, um, you also had a shield button. But, uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was time-based. So you couldn't it it was that it would actually be bad for you to hold it down, hold down the shield button because it would just wear down. You had to push down shield at just the right time, just before impact, to get the most out of it. I think uh, in regular asteroids you only had a hyperspace button. And that was it. But uh, this was one of those uh, games where they tried to improve on perfection. They added new uh, new enemies. Um, uh, and as you can see here, they also added a background to it, which I wasn't really a big fan of. Red Baron played the hell out of this one. One game. And um, I, mean, I guess it's pro this one here is probably one of the rare exceptions where I... I actually can, I actually can do all right, but um, strangely, a lot of this game is actually down to RNG because much of the much of the shots that get that get thrown at you are they're just spray and prays. There are no um, there are no sniper enemies in this game that will specifically shoot pew, right at you. I mean, like I said, it's it's a spray and pray, so bullets just get tossed around in random areas. So because of that, you actually can last a while on here.
Um, and I wonder if this here is another remaster. There's um, there's an extra sound, there's an extra whoop sound effect in there that wasn't in the arcade. I know that. Yeah, I just. That wasn't in there. The boop. That, yeah, that extra boop sound effect was not in the original arcade. So I got a feeling this here is a remaster. Warlords. Um. Didn't really get into the arcade version much. I only uh, played the arcade version maybe one time. I played the crap out of it on the 2600 version, though. Mousetrap. No. I've never seen this one before. But, uh... But I can tell already that, uh... A company called Exidy would make a game called Ladybug that, uh, borrowed some elements from this. Yeah. The red things are turnstile. As you run into them, they turn. Ladybug has that. Let me take it back about 10 seconds. Yep. Ladybug. Yeah. Never seen this one. Tempest. Another all-time classic. Played the crap out of this, but I sucked at it. Um, I played this one on um on Atari Vault, but uh, never seen it in real life. This is a variation of Missile Command. Bye bye base. Oh, there, there goes one. Okay, um. Okay, I don't. This is gonna be one of those Bill Maher things. I don't know it for a fact, but I know, but I'm sure it's true, or but I know it's true. This is sounds like this is another um. A retooling of the original on Atari Vault. The uh, the high pitched wee beep wee beep wee beep. The high pitched beep. I can't get my voice that high, but um, I think on on Atari Vault, that sound effect was actually lower, lower than this one. Yeah, it wasn't that high. Oh, oh, I know this. I played this one a bunch of times, but I sucked at it. Oh, God, I want to know. I want to try to figure out the name for myself. I want to say Space Duel. Oh, Gravatar, that's it. And it, just, it also kind of occurred to me that uh, these clips are actually a bit on the short side. In fact, they're probably not even going to show you, uh, they're probably not even going to show the guy entering one of the planets, which is pretty much what the, uh, the game is all about. Yeah, I bet they're not even going to show the planets. Yeah, they didn't even show the planets. Yeah, so it. 
So yeah, it just occurred to me that these clips are actually too short. I mean, just, just the aforementioned Gravatar. Those uh, planets that you were seeing in the uh, corners of the screen, you fly into those and then you're, it's basically Lunar Lander all over again. You gotta, you gotta shoot these uh, red bait, red bunkers and then there's these uh, little blue little blue fuel deposits, I think they're called. You have to tractor beam those in order to get some gas, get some fuel, because uh, that game there was fuel-based. And then this game here, never seen it before, but looks like a sliding puzzle. Quack. Oh, canceled. Space duel. This is the one I was thinking of. This is uh, Ash, but again, this was one of those things where uh, they tried to improve on perfection. They just took the asteroids model and just added a bunch of features and colors and whatnot, added a lot of fluff to it, so it just not as good a game. I mean, it was still a pretty fun game. Don't get me wrong, but is is no is no replacement for asteroids. Millipede. Same thing here. Eh, they just... It's like they felt the need to overcomplicate things. But yeah, they just add a bunch of different stuff. Here it is. So the, this was the... Um, this was the planet part of Gravatar. So it looks like they took that particular part of Gravatar and just made their own lunar battle game out of it. But yeah, this, aside from the different shape, aside from the, um, the red and blue shapes, this is exactly what, um, what Gravatar was supposed to be. Those, those space battles that you saw, those were, those, that was just basically fluff. It had nothing to do with the namesake of the game. The namesake of that game is what this game is right here. You gotta, you gotta shoot the red bunkers, and then you have to, these little blue squares are fuel. You have to pick those up. Because like I said, Gravatar was fuel-based. Strong gravity in that game, too. Can't even see the shots. That's what I'd call a pea shooter. I can't even see the bullets. Black Widow. Um, played the hell out of this in real life, and sorry to sound like a broken record, but yes, I sucked at it. Crystal Castles. Play this one muchly. <laughs> then you pick up all the gems and you hear. And um, another unique feature about uh, Crystal Castles is you get bonus points if you picked up the last gem in an area. Then uh, you get like bonus points for it, but uh. If one of the monsters gets the last gem in that zone, you don't get any. So. Star Wars! This is another one I played a lot. And I sucked at. But uh I've seen people I've seen people really kick ass and take names on this though. So. And um the uh, unique control for this game was um kinda like a Oh, how can I explain it? Like a, it looked, it basically moved like a steering wheel, but it looked like a pilot control. Um, steering wheel with two, uh, two triggers, you know that kind of thing. Yeah. 
ever seen this one. Never saw that one. Never seen this one either. Um, there's actually a variation of this game. Um, it wasn't made by Atari. At least I don't think it was. Called Zookeeper. Um, which kind of works like this game. Um, in a totally different way though. You're a zookeeper, and uh, the playfield was actually an invisible rectangle. You had to run around this rectangle, and as you did, uh, bricks would appear underneath you. And the goal was to keep, uh, you were trying to keep all the zoo animals from getting out. So there's also a, there's also a tempest aspect of that game as well. Um, if any of the animals got out, and they would be in your, in your, in your rectangle, you had to constantly jump over them. Or if you ran into them, you'd lose a life. But yeah, I'm, I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing a lot of this game, in that game. So. Black or cloak and dagger. Play this one tons. Yeah, play the. I am. I'm talking in real life, by the way. And uh, again, I have seen people. I have seen people beat this game too. I'm gonna pause it real quick. I'm gonna take a drink of water. Yeah, oh, and this uh, this game also had Robotron controls. You had two joysticks, one moved you, or one would move you, and the second one you would shoot, or, yeah, it was a, it was a, a fire joystick, kind of worked like Robotron. You had one for moving, one for shooting. And then um, in this game here, um, you also had an ignite button. Like if uh, this bomb here, right in the middle here, you could um, hit the ignite button and it'll... It'll light the fuse on the bomb. Um, and if you if you did it if you did it at the right time, like you, one thing that this game has is uh you get um you get extra bonus points. If you walk out if you walk out the door right when the bomb goes off, like just before it nails you, you'll get bonus points for that. Yoink. Yeah, it says that here too. Use igniter to light fuse for big bonus. Major havoc. Yep. Played this one a lot. And sucked at it. And this is um Oh, and this is uh, this game here is actually one of the more difficult ones you'll find too. Cause um I can I can kinda show you. And this stuff here isn't that difficult. This particular battle here isn't that difficult, but one thing they do totally different is um there's actually a maze level. Uh, there's a um, later on like a like Super Mario World, um and um all like the ROM hacks and stuff. Oh God! Oh shoot! What's the, there's a there's a variation of Super Mario World where they um. Some of the, you can, uh, there's a hack for it, or there's like a, there's like a Super Mario Maker. Um, you can, um, you can create your own Mario levels on it, and, um, some of those levels on there are practically mazes. Like, they're auto-scrollers, but you have to jump, 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 drop, drop, jump, drop, jump, drop, jump, drop, you know, it's like, it's like, it's practically a labyrinth that you have to, you have to navigate. This game here was a precursor to those kind of game to those kind of kind of levels like a auto scroller mazes I guess you can call it that but there's a particular level on here that has it I don't considering these uh, clips are so damn short 
probably not going to show it. Hell, they're probably not even going to show uh, what happens when you actually land on one of these, one of these star bases. It's basically two different mini games. Yeah, this. These um, the the control scheme on here is that uh, you have a jump button, you have a jump and a shield button. Um, and hitting the jump button, the longer you hold it, the higher up you'll jump. But it requires pinpoint timing too on it, because if you um if you hit the ceiling, or if you run into a wall, you'll get knocked out for a few seconds. So you gotta. You gotta have pinpoint accuracy with the jump button. Because you can't just hold it down and then release it just willy nilly. You gotta, the timing has to be perfect. Like that. That. See, he held down the jump button too long. So he smacked his head on the ceiling. But yeah, they, I didn't think they were. I didn't think they're going to show that um, that part I mentioned a few moments ago. What are the what are the uh, the space shooting levels? Is a, a maze appears before you, and you have to move your you have to move your ship left and right. You got to avoid hitting the walls. I think you can shoot down the walls, but they take like a whole ton of bullets in order to bring down. So and this one here, I Robot, um, seen it, never played it though. And this has got to be one of the first games that had a uh, polygon graphics. Firefox. Oh, yes, yes, I've seen this. I just remember now. Yep. Um, this game did it. Oh, I wish I knew the name of the game, but it was actually uh, two or three different two or three different games in one. Um, oh God, I wish I knew. One was a, one was a bomber. One was a bomber game. Another one was a, uh, called Mach One. I think it was called. It was a, uh, was another three D shooter. Or maybe it was... I, no, I think it was just two games. A bomber game, a top-down bomber game, and a, and a 3D shooter. But uh, these these games here were unique in the fact that uh, the backgrounds are real. They're actual live-action camera footage. And then they just... Um, they, uh, then they just built the video game itself around that. So, yeah, real-life backgrounds. And Firefox was based on a Clint Eastwood movie. They've got me locked on. Coming device just activated. Contact point 90 miles. You've got to think Russian. Estimated three miles from target. Radar says all. Paperboy. Yep. Play this one a lot. Um, I suck at it, but I've seen people beat it. Right in the mailbox. Marble Madness. Love the music on here.
But yeah, I love the music on this game. Um, and the soundtrack is still played to this day. I still listen to it from time to time. But um, but um, I myself, I suck it. I suck at this game. I can maybe once in a blue moon, once in a blue moon, get past the the third stage. I think there's. I think there's uh, six stages. Um, I could, if I'm playing really, really good, I could probably get past the uh, the third one. But the fourth one, never get, never got past it. Return of the Jedi. Um, played this a few times, but never got very far. voice synth. Pack rat. Peter Pack rat. Yeah, Peter Pack rat. Um, seen it. I've seen it. Never played it. Um, I take that back. I think I saw maybe one person in my entire life play this game, but I don't think he did very well. I think he never played it before and he ended up getting his butt kicked. Um, the goal of this one here is just you if you see what you got over here, you have to you have to run around and retrieve these items and then put them back here in your in your house. Ding ding. seen this one I don't even know they I never even knew they had one I thought they just did um Star Wars and that was it now uh I did however play the uh, Atari 2600 version of this and it is nothing like this one I mean it's just like a oh, how can I explain it I mean, if you ever play a game called Chopper Command made by Activision, kind of works like that, except with like uh, AT-ATs. You just had to shoot a whole bunch of them. You just had to keep shooting them, and they kept coming. Gauntlet! Yes! Oh, yeah. This one took a lot of my quarters here. Um, and I think, um, this game here, and I'm pretty sure they're going to show it too. I mean, it was a theme song at the very start of this video, Gauntlet 2. Um, on my, uh, on my top five beat-em-ups this year, and as well as Gauntlet 2, is number five. Or I'd probably say, um, with a slight lean towards the regular Gauntlet. Because uh, on Gauntlet 2, again, they tried to improve on perfection, just adding extra features and stuff, which kind of diluted from the awesomeness of the original. But And yes, I do consider this game a beat-em-up. Um, I guess my idea of a beat-em-up will be kind of loose. Any game where you, where you basically beat stuff up is, w would count. And this one does. I mean, it doesn't have to look like Final Fight for it to... Or to me, it doesn't have to be a Final Fight for it to count as a beat-em-up. Save potions for later use. Save potions for later use. Save keys to open doors. And, um... One other unique feature of this game is um, you can almost, um, not on some, but not all monsters, um, ghosts first come to mind, you can fight these monsters just by simply running into them. So you don't have to, you don't have to mash the button if you don't want to. 
You can just sit there and just, just move around. Just give your other hand a bit of a rest and just fight him that way. Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. Yep. Um, definitely played, definitely played this in the arcades back in the 80s. And as you, and I'm sure you guys are know what I'm going to say next. I sucked at it. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Super Sprint! Yippers! Played this one a lot. And, uh... And unlike a lot of other remakes, this one here is actually... This one here... They really did a really good job on this one. Roadrunner. But yeah, like like I was like I was trying to say a few moments ago, most other games that do this, Asteroids comes to mind. They had Asteroids Deluxe. Um, later on in the late '80s, chances are they might show it here. A game called Blasteroids. They try to improve on perfection further by adding more stuff to it. It just I didn't get into it as much. It's great for um I mean it's great to play for a while, but the novelty will eventually wear off. And it just makes me want to go back to an all time classic like the original Asteroids. Cause that was a game there that didn't fuck around. I mean, it didn't have any fluff at all, so But Roadrunner, another game I played. Um, never got very far. And the few other people that have I've watched play this, they never got that far either. And that was probably one of the reasons why right there. Those uh, seeds are hard as hell to pick up because you literally have to run right over them. I don't remember what kind of control scheme you had with this. If it was a trackball, though, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. I think it might have had um. I think it might have might have had ice physics. Like you can't stop on a dime. You want to change direction, you just kind of, you know, that kind of thing. A lot of drift mechanics, I suppose. Or if uh, or if you get run over, or if you get run over and um. Coyote catch it. Wah, wah, wah. Ah, Gauntlet 2. Got fond, me got fond memories of this game. Um, This one arcade I used to hang out in when I was a little kid. I would literally spend an entire day there. Just spend my one dollar and quarters that my mom gave me. And then just spend the whole day just hanging around. Um, One of the arcade attendants actually took pity on me. Because I was there like every day. Every day, all day. Um, because back then, video games were basically my life. Sometimes I would hang out, I would read at a library, but I mean, uh, there was only like a small selection of books that I was really into. But after I got to reading them, I got bored with them, so back to the arcade. But this one arcade attendant took pity on me. Um, he just, I was hanging out at the Gauntlet 2 game, and he's like, You got time? Yeah. He just, well, opened up the coin door, opened up the coin door, and just started bum 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 Gave me about thirty thousand health. Closed the door. There you go. I was like, "Whoa, thanks!" You know, and I played for probably about an hour. So, so props to him for doing that. But this is another one. Yeah, I play the hell out of it. But if I had to choose between Gauntlet 2 and the regular Gauntlet, I'm definitely going with the regular Gauntlet. Because, like I said, they, a lot of the stuff they add in here was basically unnecessary. 
and they're just trying to add extra features. Um, they're trying to improve on the original. So. No. Yeah. Th she was another one where um, you could just fight them by running uh. into them. Stun tiles and lobbers. Championship sprint. To me, this was another unnecessary. This is an unnecessary game right here. Another attempt to improve on perfection. Seven twenty. Play the crap out of this. Oh god, I love this game. But guess what? I sucked at it. But um, I have seen people beat this though. There was um, there was a little trick on this particular, on this particular park here. Um, it took some timing, but um, if you slid literally from the lip all the way down to the bottom of the ramp. You can get a 1,000 points in one go. You can rack up a huge score on this one. Like that. Skate or die! Sever, no, 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 APB. Play this one, Muchly. Ah, uh, road blasters. Yep. Um, and, the, and this is one of those games here. Um, it was a if you beat it, if you completed all fifty, all fifty races, you get a free T-shirt. Um, I, I have seen it beaten before, but only one time, and it took him a ton of quarters. I'm pretty sure that guy probably blew almost his whole entire paycheck just trying to beat this game. Um, he would be on, he would be on like level 49 or level 50, keep failing over and over and over. Like, oh shit, I'm running out of quarters, man. And he would like, he would hand like a dollar or a five dollar bill to one of his friends. He'd, <laughs> he'd like haul ass out of the change machine. <laughs> he get the quarters out. He'd, <laughs> he'd like run back and he'd like put them all up on top of the cabinet and all that. Here, 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 you know, or maybe pop man, bung, 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 you know, but. But yeah, I, I recall that memory fondly. They did not want to lose. They did not want to blow that chance. It was level 50 or bust. Or maybe both. Because like I said, I'm pretty sure they probably broke their bank trying to beat this game. Zybots. Yep, I played this a lot. And this was one of my favorite games right here. Um, I pumped much quarters into this. Um, and one um uh, one unique feature this game had, I think, if you put put if you put a if you put quarters in, you could actually uh buy current. It was always a pay. I think it was one of the first pay to win games that I've ever seen. You could um, almost like a microtransaction because this game had an upgrade system, just like they do in a lot of other in a lot of games these days. You just had a, you know, you can spend upgrade points to upgrade your character. You know, Zybots had this too. You can, um, I think you can sink a quarter or two in, and uh, you can actually, I think you hit start, and it would actually give you, it would actually give you money, in-game money to spend on upgrades for your character. So yeah, I think this was one of the first pay-to-win games, which was also one of the reasons why I played it so much. It was all. Uh, it was like uh, kind of like the other feature, the continue feature. Like if you if you die and your game's over, you can put another quarter in. Um, I th think on, on the early ones that had to continue, I think you held down like the fire button or you and or held the joystick forward and then push start. It'll you'll pick up where you left off. But yeah, this here, they had decided to they decided to elaborate on that further. 
and just make it a pay-to-win game. Here it is, Blasteroids, yep. This, I was just talking about this about five or so minutes ago. This is their, this is their attempt to further improve on perfection. This is yet another Asteroids clone with more features thrown in. I mean, now again, I did play this game, I still find it fun, but if I had to make a choice between Blasteroids, Asteroids Deluxe, or Asteroids, I'm going with Asteroids every time. So. But on uh, this game here, you have three different types of ships, and you can transform into any one of them at any time. You had this ship here. This is the mid-sized ship. This had your best firepower. This had the um, asteroids kind of shooting. You just keep hitting the button. It was rapid fire. Then you had, then you could transform into a small ship, which is which is a fast ship, or a fast ship, excuse me. But um, firepower-wise, it sucked. Just little dinky bullets that had poor range on them. Uh, and then you could also shift into a big, huge, big tank, a big tank of a ship. It was heavily armored. It moved slowly. Um, Firepower-wise, it shot big, fat bullets. Uh, and I don't think there was much range on those either, so. But you had it right here. Right here, you have a bunch of different ship upgrades. Uh, you also had a bunch of different ship types. It wasn't like your regular asteroids where it was a, a big dumb ship, a big dumb saucer that just shot in random directions. And then, then the little tiny, little tiny UFO that would shoot straight at you. But this one here had a whole different type, a whole different variety of them. Oh, oh, Cyberball 2048, I think that's the name of this, this was another one, oh god, I played the hell out of this one, but yeah, I think it was called Cyberball 2048, or just Cyberball, then I'm guessing, um, there was also a later, that had to have been the 2048 version, once again, they tried to improve on perfection, I didn't care for that one at all. This one here, though, I sunk tons of quarters in here. This and this one here, kind of a, kind of a unique, um, unique gameplay. It didn't have the standard four, four downs, four downs. Instead, um, the the ball you have, what up? After so many, after so many times, it would eventually, boom, you'd explode. You'd hear. Uh, the, the ball would blow up and your character, your quarterback or the ball carrier along with them. And then, um, like Zybots, you know, the game actually gave you, the, there was actually a currency system where you had to spend money. You could spend money on upgrades. You, and sometimes you had to spend money on buying a replacement player after that one got blown up by the ball. Um, and as, as far as I know, it didn't have a it didn't have a pay to win system though. You couldn't sink in quarters, and then you couldn't sink in quarters and convert it into in game cash to spend on upgrades. It didn't have that. So, but yeah, I played this a ton. And your the yellow line there is not a first down marker per se. What it is is the diffuse line. Once you get the ball past this line, it diffuses the ball, and you'll have another five or so chances to cross another defuse line, otherwise the ball would blow up. Um, and uh, this is also another game. Um, I think Nintendo, Nintendo did this first, as far as I know, but it had a unique cabinet. Um, it was a, a triangle shaped cabinet. You would have on one side of the cabinet would be a would be, you know, a normal, upright arcade cabinet, you know, joystick, buttons, screen, blah, blah, blah. 
and then the other the other side of that triangle would be the exact same thing um this game here had i think it had that very same thing if you could play two players um but i think now that i think about it that that version and this game here it was one of the first um it's got to be one of the one of the first pvp games to be done that way um you had i mean atari football in the 70s had it too head to head play but um you could uh, but uh, you could it was a tabletop game so you could actually see what your opponent's doing you could see which play they're picking um you could see which way they're rolling the trackball etc cetera, etc cetera. i mean each each player knew what they what each other was doing this game and the uh, aforementioned Nintendo one, you you couldn't, because again, due to the cabinet design, it was a triangle. You'd be on one side of the triangle, your opponent would be on the other side of the triangle, and you really couldn't see each other. But like I said, um, Cyberball had this as well. Diffused, ball diffused. Critical ball. If he doesn't get the touchdown, the ball blows up. I hope he shows it. Nope. Too bad. Um, played it. I played it. Didn't play it very much. It just... Um, later on, though, when I had a... Back in, like, the 90s and 2000s, when I had a PS1 and a PS2, they had a... They had a they had a game called like Atari Flashback Classics or something like that. I don't remember the exact name, but um, it um, it had this game on it and it had a bunch of other Atari games on it. Um, I played it fairly often. I played it fairly often on that on that particular port, for lack of a better word. But as far as the actual arcade itself, I played it maybe a tiny amount. I've never seen anybody else beat this game, but I have seen people get pretty far on it, though. Oh, um, unique control scheme on this one here. You had um, you had five buttons. You had two buttons that would control your legs, your left leg, leg and your right leg. You had two hand buttons that controlled your your left hand and your right right hand, and then the fifth button was the uh, can button. You would have, it, um, in this game, cans are used as ammunition. You can use them to clear obstacles. You can also you can also shoot them at your opponent here, which will knock them out for a few seconds. But I think um, I think the uh, the two leg buttons are your forward buttons. Your two hand buttons are your back butt are move backwards but move backward buttons. I think that's how it worked. Whoa. Oh Vindicators. Yet another game here that I played the crap out of. My god, what a trip down memory lane. As I anticipated. But yep, just like um just like Zybots, this game here was enough this game here was another pay to win game. Um you could pump in quarters. Pump in quarters to give you um to give you in game credits to spend on uh tank upgrades. And that was again, that was another way of keeping me up. that was another that was another thing, that was another game that kept me playing. And now that I think about it, it's also something that would carry over to this day. Um, it's also why uh, Guild Wars 2 is one of my favorite MMOs. It's because uh, it's, for the most part, pay to win. Um, it's no, nothing game breaking. Um, I mean, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can spend real money and convert it into in-game money, in-game cash, and then you can use that in-game cash to buy stuff on their auction house, or in that game there, it's called the trading post. You can buy a, where you can buy and sell stuff. So you, so like, like I said, 
you can use real money to buy in-game cat to convert to in-game cash and then use that on the trading post to to buy whatever you need so that's that's one of the things that kept me playing and what got me what pretty much burned me out about Final Fantasy 14 it didn't have that option um, if I wanted to buy something on the market boards as as it's called in that game um, you basically you it's total drudgery it's a pain in the butt it's major undercutting more selling stuff was a bitch and um buying stuff was you're you're basically having to deal with price gougers whereas didn't really see that a whole lot in Guild Wars 2. I mean, and even if there was some, even if there was price gouging, for someone like me that's a bachelor, it's just a simple matter of just pumping more real money, you know, converting more real money into gold, or in-game money, so less of an issue. But again, that was one of the things that burned me out on Final Fantasy XIV. Just, you couldn't do that. But, but, but like, I'm kind of digressing here, so back to the subject at hand. This game here, like Zybots, has a pay-to-win system, which is one of the reasons why I played the game. Which is one of the reasons why I played the game so damn much. Oh, okay. Time for another drink of water. Yep, vindicators. But um, I believe this game, the control scheme, had two, two controller, two controllers. It basically had battle zone controllers. That was something I forgot to mention. Went back when they were showing battle zone. It had tank controllers. Yo, know, moves the tank forward, moves the tank back. Um, turns the tank left, turns the tank right. Moving on, just one, one controller forward makes the tank move in a move in a circle um moving this forward move the tank in this move the tank in this direction um pulling back on this controller will cause the tank to do this and then doing the same thing with this with this joystick here this stick here would move the tank like this but um in the atari 2600 version this was my main bread and butter. B basically going in Muhammad Ali mode. Just moving backwards. Moving backwards. Sometimes moving this way. Moving this way. Basically snaking backwards. Trying to manipulate the other tanks into getting in front of me. So, But in this game here, you can't really do that. It just... I mean, due to the way the game's designed. So. Really? I never knew this. I never knew Tetris was an Atari game. That is total mind blow right there. I mean, I thought Tetris was made by some. I know it was um. I know it was designed by a Russian guy. I think it was a. I don't. I think it was a mathematician. Don't quote me on that, but uh, it was. It was created by a Russian guy. I thought it was just. I thought it was just him putting it out there I didn't think it was um I didn't think it was I didn't think it was uh created by Atari yeah um, so I'm guessing what happened here is uh it was created by a Russian guy but I think um Atari probably published it or distributed it for him at least that's what I'm guessing. But yeah, like I said, mind blown. I didn't think it was an Atari game. Hey! Hey! Um. Seen this? I forgot the name of it. Hard driving, yep. Um, later on, I don't, 
I'm kind of hoping they actually do put this in here. It's called Stun Runner. But um, it would it has the same kind of graphics this does. It looks like a, it's a polygon game. But I've seen this game in arcades. Never played it though, and I don't recall me ever seeing anybody else play this too. I think a lot of them were probably intimidated by it. Oh damn! Boom! <laughs> That's some goofy physics there. <laughs> damn! It's like he just drove into a rubber band or something. Boom! Or I should say, boing! Boom! Fuck! <laughs> sure. Here it is. Oh, 2072. Okay, I thought it was 2042. But yeah, like I said, this here was another attempt on him to improve on perfection. Didn't care for this one much. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to mention in the previous one, these little squares that you see, these are, as, a, as is obvious, pass here. This wasn't, um, I don't, you couldn't, um, you couldn't just pass in the direction you're moving. I think that was how the Atari 2600 version worked. I think, um, you just passed in the direction that you were moving. Here, um, you can only pass two specific spots. And, um, if that particular, if that particular player wasn't there, oh well. There we go, a touchdown. Um, never seen this in arcades, but I have I have watched this on YouTube though. I forget the name of it, but um, this is also one of those one of the first ones that I can think of, where um, where on the um uh, on the main title screen or the main attract screen. They had the girl with the fake hooters. Basically, eye candy. So, I think um, a game called Fatal Fury. I want to say the second one. They do the same thing. They have that ninja girl. Uh, the red ninja girl. She'd have like the big old fake hooters. And she would do her stance. And they'd kind of boom, 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 boom. You know, so be flopping around everywhere. But uh, I think this game here was a precursor to that. I don't know her name, like May Cheyenne or something like that. I don't know. But, um, I forget the name of the name of the game, but like I said, I have seen this on YouTube, but never seen it in real life though. Okay, escape from the planet of the robot monsters. Oh, and um, something else I forgot to mention way back. Um, the voices that you're hearing, like the don't shoot the civilians. That's, um, those voices are done by a guy named Ed Log. The, he's the prime designer of these games. Um, but uh, I know in, in the pinball realm, uh, 80s tables, 80s and 90s tables, like uh, Cyclone, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Whitewater, no, not, not Cyclone, not Cyclone, uh, Whirlwind, Hurricane, or not, not Hurricane, uh, Earthshaker, um, those kind of tables. Um, I don't know his name, but he, that's another example of uh, all the voices being done by the main designer. So. Skull cross. Okay, I was I was about to. Yeah, I guess I stopped it too. I was about to say, oh, I I should know the name of this game. Um, I never played the hell out of it. I played it before. Fun ass game, but it, I don't even remember what the control scheme is or anything like that. But I never lasted long on these. And the few other people that have played this, that have 
seen play this game, they don't get too far either. I forgot what the control scheme was, but it was totally unique. I wish I knew what it was. Oh. Oh. <laughs> kind of funny. They don't drop dead. They just <laughs> magically disappear. Oh, my God. <laughs> Pirates versus ninjas. <laughs> God, it makes me wonder if there's like a, like a Old West versus ninjas or something. I can only think of the third boss in the arcade game, Gunsmoke. But it would be kind of funny to see, like, a bunch of gunslinging cowboys rooting, tooting, shooting a bunch of black ninjas. You know, just shooting them all in the head or whatever. Oh, 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 hey, oh, oh, hey, oh, oh. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Okay, so we got a, we got a Zen Grand, we got a Zen Grand Martial Arts Master there, up against a, a dirty, smelly pirate that's probably dying of scurvy. Sure. Oh my God, the devs must have let really let their imaginations run wild on making that game. There it is. There it is. Stun Runner. This is another game I play the crap out of. Um, and. I'm, and just like Zybots and just like um, just like uh, Cyberball, you can pay to win on this game. Um, I think what all that you can buy with a quarter is uh, they're called um, Shockwaves. Shockwaves kind of work like what the uh, Super Zapper works in uh, Tempest. It just gets rid of everything on the screen for like a few seconds. In this game here, Shockwaves, it's not just an instant <laughs> One single flash, it just kills everything instantly. Um, it's going to start... It's going to start as literally a shockwave. It just basically just clear-cuts everything in your way. But yeah, a fun game right here. And um, it's got a really interesting... Um, real interesting physics. It's almost counterintuitive. If, if, if the tube you're in is turning left... If the tube is turning left, you basically you turn your car in the direction of the turn. Like if it's turning left, no. No, you turn your car opposite of the turn itself. Like if the car if the tube is turning left, you swing the car to the right. I like it doesn't really make much it's kinda hard to explain. But it, you're trying to you're trying to I guess attract G forces. It makes your it keeps your um, you actually gain speed. By doing that, and like if the if the tube turns left or turns right, then you you move the car on the outer part of that tube, and you'll gain speed doing that. But you're let me. Okay, yeah, as with the the red, this is the um, this is the very first tutorial course. You got to stay on the red stars. But yeah, I'm hoping it'll. Yeah, see. Yep. But awesome game. They had another? I never knew they had a third one. But yeah, I'm I'm quite certain that this one here is going to be a totally unnecessary version. Again, they're trying to improve on perfection. Oh. Touchdown. But, um, and also to reiterate, I'm guessing this game, this version, just like the previous two, they use the, uh, the triangle cabinet. So you can play head-to-head -head with an actual human opponent, but unlike the early 70s Atari games, you, you can't really see each other. You can't see what the other person's doing. So...
Well, he got lucky and the ball sailed out of bounds. Never seen this one. Oh! So this is basically super sprint with missiles. Yes. Played this one a ton. Oh my god, I sunk a lot of quarters into this one. And um I I don't I can't remember if I beat it or not. I think there's 50 waves. Yeah, there's 50 waves of this. I think I beat it. But if not, I know I had to have gotten really close. Um the way this game works is kind of obvious here. You pick these blocks. You catch these blocks, and you drop them down in one of these five slots. Um, this almost works like Tetris. Almost works like Tetris, and it works with a lot of other... Uh, how, a lot of the other three-in-a-row games that you see these days. You know, you match three or three in a row, at least three in a row, and it clears that row out, makes more room. This is probably one of the first games that did that. You know, you can, you can do a vertical... Three, three or more vertically, and it'll, it'll clear that out. Horizontally, same thing. And in this game, this in this particular wave, you got to do it with diagonals. So the diagonal ones, as you probably expect, are hard as hell to do. They require a lot of foresight and a lot of planning in order in order to pull them off. That was that was another game. I thought another thing about this game I liked just the sound effects. Um, I think this might have been it. Um, I've seen it. I've never played it, and I've never seen anybody else play it. Um, I do recall one, probably um the one that I the one time I saw this. The, the game froze up and it would keep playing the main music over and 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 over until where it got to where it just drove me up a freaking wall. You're supposed to shoot stuff, pick up booty, and then um there's a I forget his name, but he's like an evil bad guy that will try to steal your that'll try to steal your treasure. Or try to steal your stuff. I think this is it. Um, I've seen this, uh, that, in a word, I've, in a word, yes, I've seen it before. Oh, God, here, let me, um, okay, um, this is a precursor here to another game called Rolling Thunder. I don't, I don't know if Atari made Rolling Thunder. I'm guess I don't think they did. I would really love to see what year uh, Rolling Thunder came out, though. But I'm gonna go ahead and go out on a limb and say this version came out first. Pit Fighter. Yep. Played this a lot. Um, but like a lot of other games I played, I suck at it. I've seen and I've seen people beat it, but they sunk in a ton of quarters in order to do so. And um, I believe this is also one of the first games where they use real life actors. They uh, this is one of the first motion capture games that, that that was out there. So this came out before a Mortal Kombat did. Oh! 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 Yeah, that 
that's what I that's what I did. I picked that guy mostly, and that was all I did. Spam that double that uh double jump kick over and over. Um, the there was also a there was also a I forgot his name. I forget his name, some Asian name. But um, you would have a his special attack would just be. He would just do a whole bunch of palm, bunch of palm strikes. Um, the uh, other guy named either Biff or Spike, one of those two. Um, he would he's the wrestler. I think his special attack. I think he did a he did a pile driver. Either a pile driver or a power slam. One of those. But yeah. Um, no, I don't think I've ever seen this one. You know, I mean, I kind of understand why they do this. I mean, limit, you know, hardware limitations and whatnot. But, you know, if you got a rear view mirror that isn't really showing anything in your rear view, kind of not much point having it in there. I mean, I understand they're probably trying to be realistic, but, you know, I mean, you're supposed to see what's behind you, not just in opaque gray thingy. Doing a bit of barnstorming. Oh, yes. Yes. Play the hell out of this one, but I, I don't... I never knew that Atari made this one. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Um, I think this is again back when I back in the nineties or two thousands when I had a PS one or a PS two. Um, again, it was a like an Atari collection. I don't remember the exact name of it, but I think Rampart was one of the games that was on it. So yeah, fun as hell. Part Tetris, part shooter. Uh, I guess Missile Command first comes to mind. Ready, aim, fire! Ready, aim, fire! Cease fire! Shoes. Never seen this one before. Looks pretty interesting, though. I mean... I like throwing horseshoes in real life, even though I've only done it maybe a few times in my entire life. So. I might have to, I might have to check this game out. Like I said, I like horseshoes. Ringer. Batman. Never seen this one, and I never would expect an Atari to make a game like this. Batman always struck me as um uh, as a Sega game, like Sega Genesis and whatnot. Never thought Atari would have made one. <sighs> so it looks like they added some Star Wars to it too. Never seen this one. Um, and I think we're probably reaching the point where, um, I think there was a period in my life where, uh, I've never been to an arcade, or haven't been to any arcades at all, I think. Oh, here we go. We're trying to improve on perfection. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no, guys, this isn't quite working out. Or try to cram the entire world into one screen. Like, sure. Same problem here. Nope. 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 If 
these are the kind of... Never seen this one? Looks like a pretty interesting game, though. This might be another one I'd have to check out. Because it doesn't look like you're doing... Look like the traditional filling lines or anything. It looks like what you're trying to do is you're trying to connect one side to the other. Yep, 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 yep. Oh. I It's like Guardians of the Guardians of the Hood. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Guardians of the Hood. Play this one too. Um Again, um kind of like the kind of like Blastroids and Asteroids Deluxe. I still played them. I I mean, I still like the game, but if I had to choose, um I'm going with Pit Fighter. I, this is another attempt by them to improve on perfection. Are you starting to sense a theme here? I mean, you're probably hearing me say that a lot, improving on perfection. You know, it's like, I mean, it's like a lot of times these video game makers, they got they always get it right the first time. But it's like the, all the other subsequent games they make, it's like they get it wrong or, you know, it, it, it just isn't working out. But like I said, this game plays just like Pit Fighter. And I believe you have five characters to choose from. Um, you got these two. Um, and now uh, you got a girl. And there are two others that I can't remember. Yeah, this is one where the, um, the, the bad guy is trying to take over the town. Like I, I, it's like it's like two animations. Like I run this town, or something. Like, Y'all never get past my dreads. That kind of thing. It's like some corporate guy. Never seen this one. Whoops. Never seen this one either. But, um, in case I didn't mention earlier, um, I'm trying to think. At some point, oh, God. At some point, my, at some point, my, uh, my experience with uh, arcade games was very limited. The only thing I can remember me playing fairly often were the Neo Geo games. But as far as like the actual Atari games, I don't think I've... I can't recall me playing a single one of them. Like any of the the, the 90s Atari games. Yeah, I think it was uh, mostly Neo Geo. Oh, God. But yeah, I don't think I don't think um so there's probably gonna be a huge dry spell here where a lot of the games that they're gonna they're gonna be bringing up I've never seen before. So just to give you a heads up. Our basher is wham. Good. Basher's one opener. This one, this one, this one I have played. Um, this one, but this is, um, yeah, Space Lords, damn. I'm also trying to, I'm trying to pause, I'm also trying to pause the video before it shows the title of the game, but I'm, I got slow reflexes, so it's often, the name's often coming up before I can, I, before I can even say it, but yeah, this is another game I played a lot. I suck a lot of quarters in this one. Fun as hell. Um, but... Yeah, but there's like a whole wide variety of different uh, enemies you have to fight. And they all do different things. 
Um, down at the bottom, you know, you got hyperspace, you got nukes. Um, this game also has a, a rear view option. Um, it's the kind it's the kind of ship where it can face in one direction, and it can instantly do a 180 and then fly backwards. You can fly forwards and you can turn around and do this. Like that. So it's a cool feature. And um it didn't it didn't have this is also one of the first games that uh you could um it had attributes. Or I should say it had adjustable attributes. I don't I can't really recall any other games that did that at the time. At the, at this time or even before then. Um it didn't it didn't have a pay to win feature, but um your ship had four attributes, um, speed, or, I think top speed, agility, uh, shot power. Oh, what was the other one? But yeah, it had four attributes, and it also had, um, it had two slots, one for nukes, one for hyperspaces. And I, uh, you, uh, you had, like, so many, you had, like, so many attribute points that you could spend on all that. But it's, I think it's one of the first games that I've ever seen that had that feature. And, a, and still a fun game, though. Troid, Raptor. There's a uh, Noptera. Oh, yeah, and there's also... Um, this is one of the one of the most trippy things about this game, too. Uh, these nebulas. You can literally fly into them, and it'll be... Like, totally hazy and stuff. Sometimes uh, I went up. Uh, could, I could actually accidentally back into one of them. And it was just, oh, it'd be like a jump scare. It just really freaked me out. Hydrus. Never seen this one. Hubert. Comfortably dumb. Cyberstorm? I never knew uh, Atari made 2D fighters. Mind blown. Atari made a Primal Rage, but yeah, this this is one of the few 2D fighters that I actually enjoyed playing. Um, my uh, my experience with 2D fighters is very limited. Um, I tended to stay away from the popular ones like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. I only got as far as maybe the first two Street Fighters and the first two Mortal Kombat's, but um, so many people were playing them and so many players got good at playing them that I didn't really care to play them anymore. And I tended to hang up. I tended to play games like this here, Primal Rage, and um, another one uh, called Time Killers. They were uh, they were fighters that nobody really cared for, which meant hey, more for me. But yeah, it it also had a unique uh, unique control scheme. Most other two D fighters, when they when you when you do motion inputs, it's you know, you have to do like quarter circle forward, pull the joystick down from down to forward and then push a push a button in this game here you held down the button first and then you inputted the motion and uh, a lot of the players I played against they weren't used to that kind of kind of control scheme so it was one of those where I actually did have a fighting chance against them because I played it a lot more than other people did so I was I had more I had more familiarity with it but primal rage yep but again, I never knew Atari made this. I mean, I I can't remember which count. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't think I ever gave any thought to who made Primal Rage. But I, I, I never expected it to be Atari, though. Atari is the last company I would have thought of that would have made 2D fighters. I mean, hell, look at what 
Look at the, look at all the stuff they made up until this point. Not a single one of them was 2D fighters. You never would have expected it. Man. Another mind blown moment. Oh, and it, it also had one of the cool, probably, probably my all time favorite uh, fatality. Um. It was by a character named Chaos, and uh, his fatality was to literally pee on you, and you would like freaking melt <laughs> until you're nothing but all bones. Oh, that was freaking hilarious. He also had another one where he <laughs> he puke, and it kind of hang. It would slowly move in the air. He'd go from one side of the screen back to the other, and then <laughs> slurp it up. But yeah, it was a. It was pretty gross. Without being downright disgusting like Mortal Kombat. And in these days, when you watch the fatalities in Mortal Com the in the Mortal Kombat these days, like 9, 10, 11, you know, I mean, they're way over the top and they're, at least to me, downright silly. You know, that was one, was one, of, the, was one of the reasons why um, the two aforementioned fatalities were my favorites. I mean, they're... I mean, they're kind of, you know, but at the same time, they weren't, you know, literally decapitate your head and then drop your drawers and poop down your throat or anything like that. Um, Atari made this one, too. I've um, seen it. I think I played it maybe one time, but I'm not really a big fan of shooters. Well, yeah, never knew Atari made this one. I mean, I always thought it was like, when I see games like this, I always think it's some obscure Japanese company that made them. Not Atari. Reload, reload. Reload, reload. <laughs> These guys are all freaking zombies like rocket launchers. Launch over America. Beep 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 there's this big, huge dry... There's going to be a big, huge dry... A huge dry period where um, all I was playing was uh, Neo Geo games, um, home console games, mainly PlayStation games, um, and a small smattering of other games. But I don't recall me... I don't recall me ever playing... Or at least up until probably as of now, I don't recall me ever playing any other Atari games. Whoa, whoa. Accidentally muted it. Atari doesn't strike me as the kind of company that would have made this either. I wonder if um, I wonder if um, if there are if they were no longer actually making games, but just uh, publishing and distributing them. Atari doesn't strike me as the kind of company that would have made a game like this. This looks like a game that would have been made by a Japanese company. Mace the Dark Age, I didn't think Atari made this one either. Like I said, man, there's some serious mind blow here. Like I said, I'm, Atari's the last, com last company I expect to make uh, fighting games. But, but yeah, I play this game a lot. And it's actually a 3D fighter too. 
because um, my experience with Tekken, I, probably the first name that ever would come to mind when you mention 3D fighters is Tekken. Tekken and maybe Virtual Fighter, which I have very limited experience with those. I think I played the, I probably played the first two Virtual Fighters. I think maybe, I think I played a little bit of a, I think it was Tekken 2, but that that's it. But yeah, a big surprise here. Never knew Atari made this one. Chop. Maximum force. Another surprise here. I, this one here, I've never seen this one. Yeah, I've never seen this one. But again, never expected Atari to make something like this. Primal Rage 2? Yeah, never seen this one. Okay, cancelled. That's why. It was never fully developed. This looks, this looks almost like Killer Instinct 2. Yeah. It looks almost like Killer Instinct 2. It probably doesn't play like it, though. I'm guessing Sinjin on the left is Blizzard. San Francisco Rush? Oh, I've never seen this one. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen other racing games that look like this one. See, this is me. This is the kind of thing that I'd, I'd expect Atari to make. I mean, they've been making racing games since the '70s, so this kind of comes as no surprise right here. Never seen this one either. And I don't think I'd be able to play this one. That that uh, psychedelic flashing strobe thingy going all over the place, that's too distracting. Got a piece of it. And um, now that I think about it, I wonder if that, that psychedelic strobing flashing puck... Um... I wonder if um, on some of the hockey games that I see, the, the real life hockey games that I see these days, some of them you'll see like they'll the puck will have like a yellow halo, or it'll be lit up in some way so you can easily see it. I wonder if whoever designed that, came up with that, took their inspiration from this game. That's um uh, the voice actor. That's the same guy um. Uh, he was the announcer on NBA Jam. I forget his name, but he's, believe it or not, he's actually done voices in quite a few games. Quite a few pinball games as well. So. But yeah, I recognize that voice immediately. But yeah, never seen this one. California Speed, never seen this one either. Um, like I said a few minutes ago, I've seen racing games like this, like Daytona, but not this one in particular. Holy sh... Oh, damn, it's like 10 after... It's almost 10 after 4 right now. How long have I been going on? <laughs> Two hours. Oh my god. <laughs> it's a nice long trip down memory lane here. 
Oh well. It's almost over. I still so chances are I if this I'm there's a chance that I might not do a I might not do a podcast because I'm kinda going over long on this. Yeah, I've never seen this one either. forgot too. I totally forgot they made this version too. Um there's Gauntlet Legends, Gauntlet Dark Legacy. Um wait, I play this in arcades, and as you probably expect, I suck at it. I don't last very long. Or if I do, it was probably because I suck a whole shit ton of quarters in it. Um I have this on PS2. Again, I don't I don't know the name of the game I had. Like Atari Arcade Classics or something. Maybe. I mean, it's been so long, but yeah, I played it on there too. Uh, played it a ton. Uh, all the way through. Beat it. But yeah. But yeah, I guess I kind of proved myself wrong here. I mean, it's like I said a few minutes ago. Or I said some time ago. There was this huge drive spell where I don't recall me ever playing a single Atari game. I mean, most of it was, uh, I played Neo Geo a lot, and, um, I played, uh, I played my PlayStation and PlayStation 2, and just a small smattering of other, of other various arcade games here and there, but I don't, didn't recall me ever playing a single Atari game. Gauntlet Legends. Top enemies. But yeah, just like the regular gauntlets, you can keep pumping in quarters, and it gives you health, and it gives you health, allowing you to play longer. Oh yeah. Sustenance. And I, I don't know if uh, I don't know if this version had it. It was either Gauntlet Legends or uh got like dark legacy but you could also play as a you could also play as a jester it's funny as hell he throws bombs and stuff tenth degree okay i was about to say yeah this is another canceled game and once again i never would have expected atari to come out with a uh, 2d fighters I'm guessing this game has a ring out. Oh, that game. I think that game was probably a precursor to uh, the Dead or Alive fighter game series. Here, another drink of water. This guy, we're almost done here. Never seen this one. Good morning, congrats. Here is your mission. This follow red arrows. Yeah, never seen this one. But yeah, um, as far as first-person shooters go, not a real big fan. Unless it's something something like Doom, like the original 1990s Doom. Unless it's something like that, but most other first-person shooters, just, I don't hate them. I just don't get into them.
Load burners? It looks like a looks looks like a motorcycle racing version of uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. But otherwise, never seen this one. I guess you can kick other players. Boot. Boot. Actually, now that I think about it, there was a game. I don't remember. I don't remember where or when, but you could do just that. You could ride a motorcycle and you could whoosh, 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 whoosh. You could punch out other players while you're doing it. Final Fantasy VII. Um, one of the uh, motorcycle racing mini games. You could do that too. You had your cloud had a sword. You could you could take out other bikers. San Francisco Rush. Oh, I've never seen this one. And again, I've seen other games like this, but not this one in particular. Oh, yeah. You'll feel that in the morning. Assuming he wakes up, that is. I almost want to say I have seen it because the, the sound effects sound kind of familiar. Well, it looks like that's it. Looks like that's it. Um, oh, I had a good time doing this. Although, just like the uh, Capcom video I did, I think I went a little over long. I mean, it was like a 47-minute video, and it, it took me out uh, two hours to go through it. So, but otherwise, hey, thanks for um, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm just gonna go ahead and shut it down here. So, um, so to try to repeat myself, uh, thanks for watching, and um, see you all next time. Hope you enjoyed.